and I have a very special guest this morning. I'm going to let her introduce herself. She's a good friend of mine. And uh, tell the people who you are. Hi. Um, lovely to be here. Thank you for including me. My name is Evie Wilson Weatherby. I live in Macon, Georgia, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I came through the journalism route, so I really consider myself a journalist. I went to school and I thought I wanted to be a long form magazine writer, so I studied journalism. Um, and I was forced to take a visual class. I could either take graphic design or photography. And I took photography and I loved it. I loved being out in the world. And I loved when I took photographs of things later, it would inform my writing because I could go back and I could see the details in my pictures. And so it made my writing a lot better. So I really just fell in love with photography and started doing photo internships at newspapers. So I worked for an alt weekly in Atlanta called Creative Loafing. Oh, and I, yeah. yeah, I yeah. covered a bunch of galleries and um concerts and a lot of musicians and creative people which was so much fun and then i worked at a, a newspaper as a photo journalist in northern indiana and when i was there the newspaper was transitioning from being a print publication to they were transitioning online and when they were transitioning online i realized I just didn't really have a lot of the skills I really wanted to tell the kind of stories I wanted to online. So video and audio and um, I just didn't really understand it. Um, and because I was one of the younger people, everybody looks to the younger people yeah. and they're always like, you know, social media, you know, yeah. internet, yeah. you know how to do all of that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was uh, like, I, I, I use it, but I don't really know how to use, how to do yeah. it. Right. I, I did that when I was in t when I worked in television, I, uh -huh. I, I was working in TV. I'm going to tell my age. I was, I was in TV when Facebook first came out. And uh -huh. so it was like, this face thing, Can do you not take pictures with this? And that's actually how I kind of got started. With. See? I know, but it's good because I feel yeah. like being the young person in the room, you're you're open to adapting, which I think is pivotal. And yep. I feel like that's a really important thing for journalism is being open to learning a new skill or doing something, trying it out. Um so yeah, so I was working in this newspaper. Um, I went to. I decided to go to grad school and study video, and I I loved it because photography is you have so much control in photography a lot of times, um, and I wanted to pull in people's voices. I think I loved the way that people told their own stories and their voices. So I started really working in video and um, worked in D.C. for a while at a place called the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. So they fund international journalism. And then I freelanced um, in Georgia, um, in Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. And then I now teach at Mercer. So I teach documentary filmmaking and photojournalism at Mercer. And I work on my own films too. So I just worked on a 40 minute investigative documentary on an environmental justice issue in Juliet. Nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. And so, you know, you said a couple of things there that I've actually put on a couple of uh, lists that the students should have seen. Good. Creative loafing <laughs> is uh -huh. one. And, and uh, reaching out to, to different news outlets. I, I don't, I think what happens a lot of times is um, people forget that you can basically just get a foothold. I mean, you're not going to make a lot of money. And this is what I've, I've told students before. You're not going to make a lot of money in this business store. Or not. You're going to probably put about three or four years in the hole before you kind of one, get confident, and really understand what you're doing. You're gonna flop one or two times, and it used to be right around the fifth year is when things, everything starts to uh, to come together. And uh, it just takes time. I think a lot of times people get into documentary photography, and then it, you know they expect to be the Pulitzer Prize winning photographer right out the gate, and it just it doesn't work that way. So I think mm -hmm. starting out in those small areas, I think uh, what, what what suit a lot of uh, graduates. Uh, going well, and also you, you as you know that you 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 combined the two. You did photography and videography, so you are able to make yourself more marketable uh, going forward. And I think I think kind of two thoughts. One, um, I didn't make a lot of money from publications starting out, but your friends are. You're probably that person who always has a camera, and they're like, "Do we take my portrait? Will you take my graduation portraits? Will you come photograph my mom's birthday?" and you know, early on, I did all that stuff for free. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to start charging because I needed to buy my own camera and I needed to like 
afford the physical equipment, right? So I started charging that way. And so I made money photographing weddings and I made money photographing portraits, um, which allowed me to do a little bit more of the, like I did not get paid when I worked at Creative Loafing, um, but it was just three days a week. So I feel like if there's a way to get in um, like that, I feel like your community helps too sometimes. Yep. Yep. And, or and like I, the, yep. And, and that's actually one of the questions that I had. I was going to ask you, uh, I'm kind of working my way backwards, but uh, the best way to look for leads for stories, you know, um, you were talking about, we talked off, off, offline here about the uh, Juliet project. And that's a, uh, you know, that's something that I've tried to tell students as well as that uh, to kind of create your own stories, find, hunt, ask questions. Uh, those are ways to kind of find out what's going on, have your ear to the ground and you can kind of find uh, stories that can be fleshed out visually. Yeah. For, for me, the best thing, um, I read a lot of news and when you read news, especially local news, a lot of times local outlets don't have a lot of time. They can't put, put that much time into a story. So you might read something that you're like, Oh, that, I, I wish I knew more about that. Or I wish I knew if that was impacting more people. So sometimes maybe something's been reported, but you know that you could do it differently or you could do it visually, right? You could go and do portraits of all these people that have been impacted, whereas maybe you just read a written story. Um, so that's helpful because sometimes maybe one person is quoted in that, that might be what, what we call a gatekeeper in the industry. So yeah. someone who knows everybody else. So the film I worked on in Juliet, um, there's a, a very large, the largest coal-fired power plant um, is burning coal. It, so it burns coal to create power. It's a Georgia power plant. And when you burn coal, you get ash. And that ash is submerged in water that's seeping into people's well water. And everybody drinks wells, um, drinks water from their wells. And there was one man who works at a nonprofit that was testing everyone's wells. So I got in contact with him and he has all of the contacts in the community. So he was able to then introduce me into the community. So that is one way you find someone who might be connected, right? Like a minister or a pastor or, that's yeah, definitely. or like, even yeah. cut you off, that's actually one of the assignments that the students are working on. Is, right. Uh, yeah. I've, I've got them going to, you know, you see, yeah. you're the man, you're the perfect man to be teaching this. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Or like, you know, some people will always say like, if they go to a new community, go to a bar and like talk to the bartender because the bartender might know like something that's going on. Right. Um, or for, for me, the, um, I really, what happened with Julia is that I, I saw a public meeting posted and I thought, oh, this will be really an interesting meeting. And, um, it was just a community meeting to give more information about what was going on. So I brought my camera and at that meeting, it was really emotional and people were finding out about this issue that was impacting their own water and their own, um, you know, they were worried that their water was contaminated. So every person that asked a question at the meeting, I went and got their phone numbers and then set up interviews with them. And that's kind of how the story blossomed. So, you know, if there's like an event coming up, go and like see who's that's involved in the event, right? That's so the second, that's the second project that they're working great. on. Good. <laughs> the second project they're working on is that, it, you know, Students have got to go to events and cover the events. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear this because it reinforces Absolutely. exactly what they should be doing. Yeah. And I think, I think also, you know, um, if you see someone who's interesting or quirky, right? Like they would be a good portrait. They would be a good person to talk to. Right. Um, yeah. I, I went, I went and got peaches the other day and there was a man who was wearing like the most incredible outfit, right? Yeah. He's an amazing portrait. Like go up, talk to him. Say yeah. like, I start with a compliment. I love your outfit. Do you mind if I take a portrait of you? Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm actually working on a, uh, a, a personal project myself, which is some of the students to see the uh, work over, over the semester here uh -huh. is that I'm working on photography, I'm photographing black farmers, you know, because yeah. it's a, a rarity. You just don't, you don't hear about it as much. And so I've got, you know, got black produce uh, farmers. I've got black uh, cattle, you know, you know, farmers I'm photographing throughout the state and throughout the South. That's amazing. And so, like you said, you know, you just have to ask people questions. You know, I actually pulled over last week. I was riding from one shoot to another shoot. Saw a guy, you know, selling, had a produce stand, pulled up. Turns out he's 85. He's been doing it all his life. Now, now we take, I'm taking his portrait in two days. So. 
So that, you, know, you have to be able to have the art of talking to strangers. And I think the more, the only way you get confident with that is by doing it. Because in the beginning, you're like, this person doesn't want to talk to me. They don't know who I am. I've been told not to talk to strangers my entire life, yeah. right? Um, but then you talk to someone and you end up having an amazing conversation that reinforces like, okay, some people are going to say yes. And when they say yes, it's really going to be worth it. And then the more you do it, the more yeah. you realize actually only a small amount of people say no, yeah. like, I'll, you know, 100%. more people say yes than say no. I had a similar, I had a similar ex, um, experience recently. I was driving, um, <clears throat> I was driving in the mountains and I saw this really bizarre building. I really like architecture and I saw this really strange building and there was a farmer so I like made my husband pull over. We got out of the car. I like ran out to the farmer and I was he like, you were crazy. Yeah, he, that was crazy. Yeah. My husband is used to it, yeah. but he was like, I was like, excuse me, sir. Like, I've just never seen a structure like that. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. Do you know what that building is? He said, yeah, that's my house. I built it myself. Um, and so I'm going up in two weeks to film with this man. Cause he's I, just like this really interesting folk artist who wanted to build a house that he'd never seen before. And it looks like, kind of like a witch's house in a fairy tale or something crazy. So you wouldn't know unless you pulled over, right? You And you talk to people. Yep. And so, I mean, you, you know, you get all these different uh, opportunities to just, you know, talk to different people. You know, people at the gas station. You know, I talked to a guy who was a Porsche enthusiast. I asked him, I said, hey, man, where, where are you going with that car? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm a Porsche enthusiast. I've been collecting all these years. You know, he does this and that. So you just you just never know yeah. what people are doing unless you, you ask. And that's one of the main ways to make it. I know when I worked in news, yeah, I mean, you you can't survive in the news industry without asking questions. Yeah, people, you know that's the uh, 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 intricate part of the uh, the business. So let me ask you this: uh, I know a couple of students are going to probably wonder, well, gear wise, what what do I need gear wise? To, I know what they need gear wise, but I want to hear what you to say. <laughs> you know, uh, this is a photography class, or this, a this is photography, photography, because they a lot of students think they have to have the latest and greatest. Uh, a camera you don't I, i've been telling people for years you don't have to have the best you know you, you can kind of start out with the most novice camera you can find that's what i think that um i am not a gearhead so there are people in this industry that yes love the newest the greatest i like no having something that i know how to use well right and i feel comfortable with it and i use it all the time and so it feels like it's part of my body like i know I know how to set all my exposure. I can do it very, very quickly and take a picture. Um, so I think m the most important thing is something that you feel really comfortable with. Um, but I, I, for photography, I still use a digital SLR. So I use a digital SLR camera. And I think the camera model doesn't matter as much as maybe a lens. I think lenses are more important. Yep. So I would try to have one um, prime lens. So there's zoom lenses. I don't know if you, I feel like, yeah. I don't know. I, I use the, uh, my, personally, I use 24-70 and I, I, use, I use three lenses. d mm -hmm. who, they'll eventually be d soon, but my, who's my assistant, but d yeah. I've only used three lenses the entire time we worked together. So 17 to 40, 7200, 24, uh, 24 to 70, and a 35 millimeter. That's amazing. Four, yes. Four lenses. That's it. That's incredible. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, the 24 to 70 is my workhorse. That's like, yep. I always have that on my camera if I don't know what I'm going into because that one is the it's can get you pretty much everything you need yep. as long as you can get closer um and then I you know here um we have Canon Rebels for our students and but we have access to their um there's like a hundred dollar 50 millimeter lens and the reason a, a prime lens is good is because it allows you to have a shallower depth of field, which allows more light in mm -hmm. so that you can be in a darker situation. Mm -hmm. So I think playing around with that is really fun. So I, yeah, I, I think it's, gear is awesome because it can unlock, you know, it can unlock sometimes being in a really dark situation if you have better gear that'll help you. But if you are out taking portraits in the world, right, you can do that during beautiful light. You can go during sunrise or sunset. You can schedule things when the light is going to be pretty and work with the gear that you have. So, 
Yeah, I I think it's just the most important is to like really know how to use the gear that you have and push whatever gear you have until you reach its limits. And then that's when you know that maybe you need to upgrade. Nice, nice. So um, let me ask you this. What, what, what advice would you give to that student who just feels like they just right now, they just have a block where they just, they can't get past the barrier of trying to just figure out what they want to do? Uh, because I keep telling people documentary photography doesn't necessarily just mean hard news. You can, you, yeah. can, you can do a lot of different, different aspects of, of documentary uh, photography. Yeah. Um, I want to first say that, like, I, I've been doing this for a while now. I've been doing this for, like, a, more than a decade. And my, um, I still get socially anxious. So when I have to go out and take photos, sometimes I sit in my car and I, like, give myself a pep talk. And I'm like, all right, you got to go out there and you got to talk to strangers and you got to do it. You got to do it, right? Um, I still get nervous about the, that feeling. But then when you do it, you really, I, at the end of assignments, I'm always just so joyful because I met all these people and made all these connections that I wouldn't have made otherwise. And I've really learned about it. Um, like learned about the community. And, and I think that, you know, I personally know amazing photographers that are extroverted. And I personally know really amazing photographers that are introverted and both it's like their superpower. So I think whoever you are, you can bring that to your work. Um, I think it's really fun to work on something that you're interested in. So if you have the ability to photograph things that you yourself are interested in, um, that makes the work more fun. So yeah, if you're interested in cars, right, go to the car show. If you're interested in agriculture, right, do something related to that. Yep. So I, I th- and, and that all is something that I've also told students is that personal work is the most important part of this business. Uh, because once again, to reiterate what you just said, it allows you to photograph something that you like to do. And it allows you, um, it's a luxury to be able to spend time, right. To spend time on what you're, what you want to do. So if you build a portfolio of the kind of work you want to get hired for that, people are going to see that and they're going to say, okay, this is the kind of work that this person does. I'm going to hire them for that. Or I'm going to think of them in that way. Right. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, I think there's like interesting people, but also if you're working in a visual medium, like if you're doing uh, documentary photography or film, finding things that are just going to be visually interesting, right? Like, so I will talk to my friends here and I'll say like, all right, yeah, I'm thinking about a new, I'm trying to figure out what my next film is going to be. Um, do you have anything that might be like just really interesting to look at or visually yeah. compelling, right? Um, so thinking thinking like that. Um, yeah. All right. So Evie, this is the last question because I know you got to scoot out of here. Yeah. Got to go to work. <laughs> um, how important is having a good website? Uh, to, to find and work? So I think that, um, I think it is, I think it is important. I think it is, I think it is important to have a website. Um, and I think it's important to have a website. Um, yeah, just with your best stuff on there, because when I was in a position to give grants or to hire people, you just want to know that that person is at a certain technical level that they can actually execute the assignment that you're giving them, right? So you just want them to, you want to be able to see their work enough to know, all right, like, this is good. I can like, they're technically able, right? And I think when you're starting out, that could even be like your Instagram, right? Like your Instagram could just have like your best work on it, or you could make an Instagram that was for your like really good portraits or something that you could share. But I do think it's important to, to be able to see the work that you've done to know, okay, they could do it. Like, I know that they could do it. They've got an eye or they've, they've got it down or like, I see that they've got something that we could push and work with. Um, so I do think it's important to have one, but I think it can be, you know, it can be a WordPress website. It can be like, um, it doesn't have to be super flashy. I think it just has to have, um, I think it has to have you know, a portfolio. And then I think it's really helpful on your website to know where you work. So I work in middle Georgia. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Evie, thank you so much uh, for taking out the time to join us today. And uh, where can the uh, people, if they want to follow you and see some of your work, where can they, where can they follow you? Um, my, you can look up Evie W, E-V-E-Y-W on Instagram. Um, and then if you want to send me an email, 
um, it's just Wilson period E V E Y at gmail.com. And I'd, I'd love to hear from y'all. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And once again, uh, everybody take heed, rewind this, watch it over two or three different times uh, if, and get all of the nuggets that you can get. Cause she dropped some great nuggets in here. So, well, I was just reiterating what Mr. Odom gave you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Evie.